Okay, what we're saying, guys, again. Missed a day yesterday. I was going so well. What did I do six days in a row? Can't remember what I did yesterday. But, yeah. How to use knees over toes to become bulletproof. This beginner's guide to knees over toes training. Four steps. How you're going to go from, I cannot put my knees over toes, it hurts. To, okay, I can do a sissy squat. This is how. So, why were we told no knees over toes? There was a 1961 study which said there was more pressure in your knee when it goes over your toe. However, people just took this as, okay, that must mean it's bad for your nose, but your nose, your knees. Realistically, it's not. It's just bad for your knees if your knees can't handle that stress yet. So, the common advice became no knees over toes. As you see in this picture, stick those behind. But when you look at this, it puts more pressure on your hip. Like they, they were like, oh, nah, put your knees behind your thing because there's more pressure on your knee. But when you do that, there's more pressure on your hips. So are your hips going to get worse? That's why all athletes are so hip dominant. We've got um, more injuries in the lower leg, knees, ankles, this kind of stuff because we're powering up our hips, putting more pressure on our hips, and then our knees just crumble. Um, so, yeah, start squatting with your knees. But I'll show you how to get there. Okay, so my own journey with it, I was told no knees over toes for, for a long, long, long time. Every day in gym class, even after that, like in my head, I just had, yeah, that's just how, like what the squat form is. I I wish, I do have a squat video somewhere of me doing it like this, and it's awful. But this led to me having five years out, like even my physiotherapist, I wasn't doing deep, full range of motion after my knee surgery. And I was still like three, four years out after my knee surgery. So it, it's not really the greatest thing in the world, is it? And then I found Ben Patrick in lockdown after doing hours and hours and hours of study and i came across this guy knees over toes guy i was like wait i've been told not to do that let me see what he's saying um and then i was like okay i listened to him let me study for myself so i started watching the best athletes and i was like if we look at this brief clip here there's so many well my face is in the way but there's so many times when messi's knee goes over his toe it's like the most athletic position like it's constant I don't like if we slowed that down and looked at how much it is doing that. The knees over toes constantly, and it's it, the more your knee can go over your toe, the more athletic you're going to be. If we're not training it in the gym and we're going out on the field and our knee can't handle those positions, then it's going to hurt. No wonder. Um, so, why is it important? Charles Poliquin, most successful strength coach of all time, um, Ben Patrick's mentor, he has a quote that says, the further your knees can go over your toe and the stronger you are in this position, the more protected you are. So, even if like the best strength coach in the world is saying this, we need to get to a point where our knees can handle these positions. If you look at people like Ben Patrick, sissy squats, reverse Nordics, um, and he's dunking, he's doing all this stuff. He hasn't had a knee set back in 10 years. Myself, I'm starting to get to the point where I can do reverse Nordics, sissy squats. Not cold like he can. I have to warm up a little bit. <laughs> um, but I haven't been training for 10 years. I've been only doing ATG for about three. So I'll get there. Just takes time. And yeah, so more athletic positions. If you look at Messi, Michael Jordan, their knees are so far over toe. And if we don't train these positions, our ankles become really tight. Our knees start to hurt. Our connective tissue degrades. So we need to start training knees over toes. Um, and it takes time. Like I say, I can't do full cold reverse Nordics, sissy squats, just jumping about whatever. I have to warm up a little bit. So just don't jump into the crazy ones. Don't jump into ACG split squats. Don't jump into sissy squats. Do the regressions if you do. And there's four levels of knees over toes training, in my opinion. So step one is backwards walking. So this is the lowest level of knees over toes training. It's short range and concentric, which... I can go into a whole thing on that itself. Basically, it means that we can get work to the tissues without it breaking down. Like when you do an eccentric, so the way down, such as a step up, it actually breaks down the tissue and then we have to rebuild it. So doing this, it doesn't break it down, but it gets blood flow. It gets healing to the area. And we start training this knees over toes position without causing loads and loads of damage in our knees um and then over time we can start to build strength with the sled we're going backwards putting weight on it and we're just getting stronger in these knees over toes position um so then that will eventually allow you to get into something like a reverse step up so like i say this adds oh just clicked off it 
So this adds the eccentric component to the training. You see how like now I'm training the way down, but on, if you look here, I'm just pushing backwards. There's no loading into the eccentric. It's just concentric. So yeah, this is also a joint dominant movement. So you've got to go slow with this, be careful, regress it with height. So this is, I think, what, like eight inches or something, six inches, something like that. And you just want to have that low. I started on flat ground, start on flat ground. It doesn't matter. And that reduces the range of motion so the higher we go the more our knee goes over our toe so by building the height over the time it allows us to get more used to the knees over toes positions um over and over so yeah advance regress with height if if you're still hurting with height use upper body assistance hold a pole take off body weight and just build up over time it's the more you do sleds the better you'll get out of this the more you do this the better you'll get out of the next step so which is 80 split squats so this looks quite advanced this was me like a year ago i think it's probably a new video on there um but basically the 80 split squat is even more knee over toe if we look at this position here even into the full thing we want our hamstrings to cover our calves our knee to be right over our toe and this is strengthening our knee in this position so this and squat probably come around the same point if you can't do squats yet do these first because they're unilateral so our more damaged side can be trained for more sets or lighter in a certain way so if we go into a squat we might not be able to handle it because our right one can do more and there's imbalances stuff like that and it's a long range exercise so there's more structure change to the muscles to the tendons um and there's so you're basically lengthening the tendons when we're in this bottom position and then strengthening them from there and then a little bonus on the ATG split squat is the hip flex length on the back leg a lot of us have back problems from sitting for so long i used to um and when i was in amazon i used to have amazon when i was like 19 i had back pain i started doing all the ATG training and it went away and i was like one of the only ones in amazon that didn't have back pain so yeah so we get really tight our backs are bent over all the time so we're lengthening that that front hip flexor and allowing our posture to be better so it can cure a bit of back pain it can help with taking some pressure off your knee if we're really tight in these positions it's going to be putting more pressure on our knee so yeah that's the next level these can be regressed by having your front foot elevated a lot higher and then just using assistance maybe using your chair is the best way to start but don't push through pain don't go through pain Go to the range you can for now and then build it over time. We don't need to be training through pain because if we train through pain, it's just going to make it worse next time. We don't want to run away from these exercises. We don't want to say, oh, I'm not going to do the HG split squat because it's too much for my knee. Do it just at a very low level, whatever level your knee can handle it. So if it is really, really high elevation with assistance, do that for now. Um, don't think like, oh, I need to do flat ground, even if it's hurting and push through it not the way to go so yeah moving on to this this is the double leg squat so like i say these can be interchanged with atg split squat some people can get into this better some people can get into an atg split squat better it's a mid-range exercise so we're building a lot of mus muscle and then if we add the slant like this you see our knees are pushing more over our toe probably shouldn't show it um and then getting deeper into this range of motion so it's a more potent direct knee exercise when we're adding this slant if you want to take away the slant a little bit maybe use HG buddies maybe use um a plate it will make it less knee potent and then you can just build that over time again this can be regressed by not by height this time but by using assistance of, bo of body weight when i had my quad tendonitis this was probably the best exercise for me um the split squat was a bit too much on flat ground so i i elevated that um and i also used assistance of the body weight this one um with the ac squat i felt like with my quad tendonitis that i could get really deep in this and it would feel good for the quad tendon um and then yeah but obviously not training through pain again um and yeah those are the four steps so if you use these four steps over time and you get more and more and more used to knees over toes training i know that everywhere online like it's like oh knees over toes will fix this knees over toes will fix that it's not about jumping right into AG split squat if you've got pain. It's about getting to the point where we can do that. And then that's going to be what fixes your knee pain because now we can handle that load. We can, we're stronger in our tendons. We're stronger in our knees. So, yeah, those, these are the four steps to be able to do that. 
and this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's loads and loads and loads of different things that add up. Um, if you've got tight hips, that might add to knee pain. If you've got weak tibialis, that might add. If you've got weak calves, if you've got weak hamstrings, a lot of things add to the this. But if you use these four steps, it will help 100%. Um, but don't neglect things. Don't neglect hamstrings. Don't neglect lower leg. We want to no weak links. We want to balance out our entire body, structural balance. Um, and if you want to ask me any questions about this, I, uh, my Instagram is Bulletproof Baller. And then I'll leave a cool booking link down in the description. So if anyone wants to hop on a call and see what I can do to help them with their knee pain one-on-one, um, just book a call and, and we'll be able to chat about it. So yeah, I hope this helps. Back on the daily vid grind. Um, loving the YouTube. Like You can probably tell like, my energy is high. Like, I just love chatting shit. Maybe I'm making a few mistakes, but overall I think I'll help people more. So yeah, amazing. Um, share this with anyone that needs it.